Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave and happy Monday morning over here. Always wishing you the best of the best from Helsinki, Finland. It is cold as fuck once again, negative six degrees Celsius. So I hope it's warmer where you are, unless if you really do enjoy the, the cold weather like myself, which is kind of weird. Anyways, let's get into the live stream right over here as there's plenty to talk about. The bullish scenario on Bitcoin has been uh, activated. Bitcoin taking out the critical level that we spoke about yesterday, going over here to the BitMEX can chart um, right over here. This guy at uh, 3,900. So again, um, you know, obviously I wasn't live at this time but you know just essentially doing exactly what i said i would as, as as i said yesterday you know as soon as you close above this area right here and even just take out the high of this guy right here at 38.79 um as soon as you just tick right right above that guy that is started that uh that is where i started to kind of layer in a position um i've been trading around but i am just kind of holding uh holding this guy uh, my average price is actually 3800 but remember you know i've been kind of like going between cash and having positions so uh so i will be taking that off um relatively soon i uh, we are trying to consolidate at this next resistance right over here, but you can see that the measure move actually is pointing us all the way to a hair under 4,200, just kind of the prior high of this guy right over here. So there's a lot of things very interesting about this area that we're currently at. And keeping in mind that uh, the Bitfinex maintenance is going on a little bit later today, or Bitfinex fuckery, as uh, I think it's more appropriately called. Um, you know, this area is of great importance. While it does look to me like Bitcoin probably wants to at least give it another try, um, this price action is still extremely corrective. Look at the volume characteristics down around here. Uh, this is the volume characteristics that, uh, that I was looking for the break on this guy right over here. But overall, when you see uh, and, and you compare it to your initial pumps right over here, this is not good enough. And this, again, it kind of confirms in my mind or does confirm in my mind that this is, you know, overall, this is very corrective price action and the low is very unlikely to be in of course always have to be agnostic and you know be able to float with the price action um depending upon what it tells you but uh a lot of warning signs within this but that also again doesn't mean that bitcoin can't have you know a nice little rally it's gonna have rallies uh just like it has dumps you know in, in a in a bull market in a bear market you will have your rallies to shake out the over aggressive over leveraged shorts which we shouldn't certainly have a lot of um Anyways, uh, so yes, next big area of interest is this area that we're currently at right now, right around 4080 to 4100-ish area. Uh, also meeting with the descending uh, resistance trend line from basically just our last uh, couple of swing highs over here. So as long as we are below this area, 4100 and closing four hour deal just below there, it's just another lower high. As as far as things go, Bitcoin basically in a downtrend, <laughs> Nothing, nothing's really changed. And this is what I really want to get out here. Now, I actually do feel like, and this is my opinion, but I do feel like Bitcoin probably does take a leg up and at least test this area right over here, 4200. But again, opinion not needed to make money. And I, I, I even want to, I want to highlight this even further, you know, down around here, I think, um, you know, I was leaning towards this probably being broken to the downside, but again, opinion not needed to make money. This is what I mean by not trading my opinion in that waiting for price action to tell you what to do when it basically took out this area right over here. It was very clear and the signal was set and time to, you know, move onwards and forwards. So again, um, you know, depending, it doesn't matter what your fucking opinion is. Price action is price action. And this one, um, giving you some pretty, uh, some pretty clear signals. So I just wanted to get that out there. And that is what trading is all about. You can't force your opinion on price action and you know when it comes down to it that's it's completely unnecessary be the casino not don't be the fucking gambler anyways um okay so as long as we're kind of in this area right over here i'm not you know i'm not necessarily looking to long um even if it takes out this descending uh trend line right over here at 4100 i i think it's still a pretty risky trade as i don't really see too much um you know, above 4,200, meaning in the way of it's this, this, this is the very difficult part about trading counter trend in, in an overall, you know, very, very strong trend. I mean, the, the trend is still down. It's still a bear market. All three things that I'm looking for to kind of denote the bear market being over there. No, it's still nowhere near being hit. Um, but, 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 but the next big trade is likely going to be, and the next big skill um, is going to be figuring out which one of these guys is going to be the next top. So, what am I essentially looking for? Well, I'm going to be looking for, first things first, price action to tell me. And what and what does that mean? Well, just going off the horizontals, we have a very obvious level that we're currently at right now. Uh, this should really be encompassed all the way up until this 4180 area right over here, just kind of your prior swing high. If that area gets taken out, I will try another big trade somewhere right around this 4350 area right over here, this high. And then if things do break out above there, 4550 right over here would be the next area that I'm looking towards. 
Um, we should see this line up with one of the bigger exponentials on the daily. Yep, we got the green 55 coming in right around here, 4180, 4190. So a lot of things kind of suggest in that area. And I really don't think it would take too much to actually get Bitcoin to get there. But again, look at the volume characters down around here. This is not good. And this is going to get all the inverted head and shoulders people is really, really excited. It's Again, it's still not an inverted head and shoulders. I mean, you kind of kind of lost the shape over here. The volume characters are wrong, blah, 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 blah. I don't really want to get into this because just get it's it's just gonna fucking it's you you already fucking know anyways if you've been tuning in content like this you already know anyways um okay so green 55 right over here that's the next big area that i'll be uh, looking for while we are like i said while we are kind of at a at a major resistance right now i don't i feel like it wants to give it another try consolidating out of resistance like this is typically a good thing and with uh you know keeping in mind finex maintenance coming up a little bit later i wouldn't i wouldn't mind some volatility coming in this market Anyways, uh, the next sort of thing that I'm looking for also is secondary to price action. Again, always secondary to price action is, is I want to see what my indicators tell me. I'm going to basically be looking for some something that's de demonstrative of, uh, of exhaustion to the upside. So how can we see that? Well, RSI divergence, um, as of the current time, we, we don't really have anything to look at. You know, it's, it's just one pump so far. Uh, good old one pump chump. And, uh, you know, a uh, ADX DMI actually suggesting that this probably does continue as well, giving you a very, very good long signal um, yesterday. Uh, in fact, I want to see how, yeah, it's, we even have it on the 8-hour right over here. What about the 10-hour? 10 10-hour is giving you the long signal as well, pretty fresh 12-hour uh, and 12-hour fresh one as well. So I like all these things and uh, for, for, for kind of saying that we're likely to continue. Um, you can see right now, though, it is struggling along, uh, along this guy right over here at around 4,100. So... Again, if this if this does turn around, got to be fast. But I don't think it turns around right here. Just it doesn't feel like it. Again, feeling's not the best thing to be going off of. But um, you know, it's 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 again one of those things. I want to speak uh, specifically now to this area and this scenario right over here. Uh, the 200 exponential actually coming in right around that 4150 area as well. So uh, you know, all between the 4150 and 4200 area is going to be just a massive thing, uh, a massive cluster, um, so to speak. So. So here's the thing. As long as Bitcoin is both opening and closing weekly dildos below this purple 200 exponential moving average right over here, I am, you know, overall bearish. I mean, as long as it's, you know, and, and by a lesser degree, as long as it's creating lower highs on a daily, I'm still pretty bearish. And as long as you're below 6,000, I'm overall bearish. Now, of course, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be one thing before the other. Obviously, the daily is gonna be first and the weekly. Then we can talk about 6,000. So, uh, in this area right here is very very difficult because it reminds me a lot of what bitcoin did over here in 2014. look at the volume characters in comparison to your parabolic cycle look at your volume characters over here in comparison in comparison to your to your parabolic cycle and uh you know again i, I don't want to go over the full reasons why i don't believe that uh that we've seen the lows over here um if you want the full-on explanation of that go check out the video i uploaded yesterday um in the uh long-term analysis playlist that will go into it in much more detail I'll just kind of uh, briefly talk about it here. I mean, the volume's not good enough. The time spent at the lows is too fucking long. And also the percentage gain off the lows is is not consistent with what you typically see on, on actual market bottoms, um, especially with cryptocurrency. Anyways, uh, this guy right over here, you can see that Bitcoin did spend a lot of time going sideways. A lot of people thought that the ultimate low was in. You see some volume being done at the, uh, at the bottom right over here. But again, you know, in relation, in, in context of the actual price action or, or, or previous price action, it's not that much. Uh, which is pretty fucking important. Um, but you can see that, you know, Bitcoin actually did put in a very slight higher high right over here, even on the weekly. Uh, I believe this guy closed. Yeah, this guy closed 387 and a half. Um, and this guy closed 389, 390-ish area. So ever so slightly higher high. And I'm sure that got everyone, uh, everyone very interested. But that is kind of... Rem uh, reminiscent of what we could be doing over here and uh, and I do actually believe that we're probably gonna get another wick above the 200 exponential moving average again this is an opinion type thing um, but as long as we're closing below there it's probably gonna be a sell and you're probably gonna get something similar to what you got over here uh, using the 100 exponential so again um, this is more of an, opinion, of, of an opinion thing, not technical analysis, but just because this price action is corrective, just like it was over here coming off that first big drop um, and first big drop right over here, you know, I, I am sort of thinking in that mode. I am very, very hesitant to <laughs> to looking at this and thinking that this is going to, you know, hit some hit, hit the more bullish target that I laid out yesterday. But because we actually did 
um, because because Bitcoin actually did essentially take out what would have been the descending broadening wedge uh, resistance trend line. Should talk about it um, again. I don't believe that this is going to actually happen, but this is what the bulls are going to be looking at right now, and this is why I and I'm going to explain why I absolutely hate playing bullish things in an overall bearish market, and also bearish things in a bullish market. But for now, we are still in a we're still in a fucking bear market. When you're making lower highs for after lower highs for the last year, probably in a bear market. <laughs> it's like that fucking redneck guy. If you are making lower highs, you might be wrecked. Yeah, there you go. Anyways, um, <laughs> anyways, uh, okay, so the measure move on this guy would be pointing you towards uh, 4,900 or a little bit under 4,900, about 4,850-ish to be exact. Um, although these things should not be taken like literally to the fucking dollar, uh, just kind of more like a guideline. But uh, but resistance is along the way. Again, first we'll have this 55 exponential right over here, the 4,250 uh, horizontal from your prior high right over here. Also the current area that we're at, although I I don't think it gets stopped here, actually. I don't, I don't believe it gets stopped over there. Um, and then also this area right over here. So this is, this is again, going back to the delicate scenario. And, and, and I am glad that we now have, um, we now have a resolution on the lower time frames for actually, you know, breaking this guy to the upside. So I'll, I'll be trying trades out right over here, 4250 to 43. And then this guy right over here, 4550 um, to about 46, going to be another zone. If that area gets taken out, then yeah, 40, I, I don't really see much stopping from 4900. Um, still don't see why people are talking about 5000. I don't, I don't see, I, I just don't, I, I don't really see that. It doesn't mean that it can't happen. It doesn't mean that it won't, it won't like present itself um, in the future. It certainly can, but uh, but for right here, right now, you know, when you're talking about a bullish formation in a bearish market, a lot of the time it'll get sold into before reaching its like its ultimate capacity. You'll probably remember back here in um, 2018, everyone was looking at what they were looking at this as a falling wedge, which, you know, you, if you know me, you know that I'm a wedge racist. I absolutely fucking hate them. They are disgusting. I hate like I hate every single one of them. It doesn't even matter. Just come at me, social justice warriors, because I will destroy all of your wedges. I won't destroy them, but I just don't want to fucking trade them. That's what, that's what I really mean. Anyways, um, you know, Bitcoin was putting in this formation right over here, and technically you broke this guy out to the upside. Everyone was looking for like thirteen thousand Bitcoin after that. And what happens? You know, you don't have the volume. You, you don't have the volume confirmation on an actual breakout, especially you know after this sort of turnaround down around here. And uh, you know, it basically gets sold into after testing a major resistance right over here, not getting anywhere near its proverbial its proverbial uh, measured move. So again, that's that's why I'd, I'd exercise extreme caution. Um, broadening wedges, I do feel like have a greater degree of playing out. Um, overall but uh in, in comparison to to falling wedges or rising wedges but uh but again you know i'd be i'd have great i'd have a i'd have eyes on these next sort of areas um so this would be it from the daily and you know as we saw on the lower time frames the four hour does show a lot of shit right around here right around this you know a, a little bit below 4200 so 4190 to 4180 uh not only do we have the daily 55 but we also have the weekly 200 and we also have this nice horizontal from this last swing high we also have the measured move off this guy right over here and uh uh, get you know it's I, I think that one has a ha, has a pretty damn uh, good chance of you know likely being a, a very good trade again trading is all about statistical setups about being the casino not being the fucking gambler and looking at this guy you know that to me is going to be worth it um I'll probably be getting out of my long. I'll definitely be getting out of my long somewhere, somewhere right around there. Uh, if we get there, I mean, if we do take out on, uh, you know, this area first uh, that we're currently using as support, then I will get out of my long right here. I mean, basically, if, if we close a four-hour dildo below 40, 30-ish area, I will get out of my long. Um, I, I, I think that that's less likely to happen though right now. Um, anyways, uh, this is the first area that I've become extremely interested in. Now, Bitcoin has done something. Um, new uh bitcoin has done something new that it hasn't done in literally since you know november of last year when it was above 6300 uh when bitcoin uh was above the yellow 21 exponential moving average this is a big deal to me that bitcoin has actually closed above it right over here now again extremely low volume on this it doesn't look good to me it, it doesn't look good to me to be to be quite clear um but you know when you get the when you get the uh well we need to go to a, a stamp chart first yeah when you get the uh, two-day dildo death cross right over here the green 55 crosses it down to the purple 200 um to me uh, that starts to get a little that starts to get a little bit undone uh if and when bitcoin does get above the uh, 21 exponential um and start closing back above it so we have closed one above it but we have not both opened and closed one above it uh just yet in fact we haven't done that since the uh, since the death cross so oh bitcoin actually selling down right now god damn it is it's gonna it's gonna leave the leads us leave the station without me um 
but uh, basically what could happen right over here, if this does get rejected and you, and this is the confirmation that I would be looking for if, um, if, if this is going to be the trap area instead of, you know, 4,200 as, as I was kind of postulating before and goddamn, it's actually selling down like pretty aggressively right now. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Um, but uh, but but this two day will turn into hidden bearish divergence, uh, basically printing a higher high on your RSI oscillator while uh, making a lower high in price action. And this would basically just be a very nasty hunt. So Bitcoin actually selling down again a little bit more aggressively. Jesus Christ, man, there it goes. Uh, let's go down to lower time frames. These red dildos again, very intense indeed uh, coming down to test a 21 exponential. I'm actually going to get out of uh, let's see if I can get out of most of my long or sorry. Yeah, most of my long right over here. Okay, um, hmm. let's see, I want to get out of, uh, let's see if I can do like 4020 would be great because it's like almost almost the same as 420. So it's a good number, you know, anyways, uh, let's let's see how the 21 exponential holds up on this first pass. But uh, remember, Finex maintenance coming in the next um, three or so hours, I believe it is. Uh, I, I think it's at um, uh, zero zero UTC or, or is it uh, I should probably get confirmation on that. I'll have, to, I'll have to learn that one before before the stream tonight, but uh, but Finex potentially down for seven hours uh, in totality later is what they've been saying. So, so, so sometime today. So if you are on Finex, be, be careful. I hope you've already made preparations. Uh, hopefully it's not too late, but um, if it is, well, <laughs> there you go. Anyways, um, okay, so let's see. We might, well, we might actually see this area break. Um, this, this, obviously I did not make this on an hourly. I made this on a four hour. Uh, we'd want to see it actually broken and confirmed on a four hour, but, uh, yeah, so far not looking too good Two out. My, I could even make the decision on a two hour right over here at around 40, 30 ish areas. So, uh, yeah, I might, I might, I might give that a sell in the next pass. Um, if this does come all the way back down to about 3950, I'd imagine a bounce somewhere in this zone between 3900 and 3950 ish area. Uh, keep in mind, um, CMEs over here do, do have a nice gap up. So there will be a, you know, if it does come back over here and fill this gap at about 3880 ish area, um, that's probably going to be a buy, uh, from me. But, uh, you know, pretty much, I mean, a every gap I've ever looked at in, 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 uh, in history, you know, has been filled. But, 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 but the timing of that is something that is variable. So, you know, it could, it could take a couple months, it could take, you know, literally a few hours, it could take, you know, five minutes. Uh, these sorts of things are, that that is a variable of it. But this is a pretty prominent gap right here. Filling this prior gap from, uh, from well, do I think we already kind of filled it right over there. Uh, but officially filling it definitely now. Um, so, you know, is Bitcoin gonna turn down off that? Well, again, um, there, uh, uh, yeah, looking at this area right over here, it actually does make sense, so fair enough. Um, so keep that one in mind. Anyways, uh, going back to our spot charts right over here, um, looking like, yeah, looking like it wants to come down a little bit. Anyways, uh, let's go over to GBTC, and there's there's going to be a few big other things to be aware of right now. Remember the overall down, not the overall downturn resistance line, but the downturn resistance line that uh, that we're looking at right over here. This to me looks like a pair of rejections on the four hour dildo chart. Um, this is GBTC, by the way just in case if I forgot to mention that, but also rejection of the green 55 on the four hour as well. And what does that kind of look like what we're doing on Bitcoin right now? Well, as spoken about before, you know, Bitcoin essentially getting just close enough to this uh, to to uh, to this downtrend line right over here that's creating those lower highs. So is uh, is spot Bitcoin basically catching up to GBTC? Well, GBTC has been leading the market for the last, you know, over a year. Um, so uh, so he could be the canary in the coal mine, suggesting that we will get rejected right at this area. And that would be the more immediately bearish case. Um, overall, I am bearish. I do believe that Bitcoin's going to be hitting some more lows. Uh, and then, you know, later on, I'm, I'm pretty damn bullish. <laughs> I always have to say that because, you know, the, the permeables are going to get really fucking mad. And they <laughs> they don't like that when you say that kind of shit. But hey, um, it, you know, that uh, that is my belief. So, again, the, the kind of t person tuning into this, into this content, I think, understands all that kind of stuff. And that's the kind of person that I really want to, you know, promote being in here um anyways uh going down into the lower time frames on gbtc it is a little bit less um less nasty now this still does look like a, re a pair of rejections right over here but you could also make the you could also make the uh the argument that this is just consolidation anyways um I, you know, it's, I, I would put more weight on the higher time frames, and I would say that this looks like a rejection and looks like we're just basically filling out an overall descending triangle right now, um, which if we go over here to our GDAX chart and erase this more disgustingly bullish uh, scenario, just kidding, um, but, you know, could we be doing something like this? Well, well, it's very possible, something like this. 
Well, yeah. And what would that be? It would be a descending triangle. I think best seen on perhaps a lower time frame. Uh, the daily is a little bit less clear. The four hour is a little bit more clear, actually. And in fact, if you do go off this point instead of the point that I just chose, which, you know, does that work better? Yeah, it kind of does. It kind of does. The volume characteristics are still are, are more consistent with this being a descending triangle rather than um, rather than a full on breakout. So, again, I would exercise extreme caution. And, you know, the more that I look at it and the more after seeing this reaction right over here, after getting to this level, uh, this that actually really could be it. So. I think I might have been a little bit too bullish earlier. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Get those pitchforks off there. <sighs> These damn pitchforks. I love how people make pitchforks into like being this this magical creature. It's just a fucking channel, man. That's all. That's 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 all it is. That's literally all it is. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, you have this you have this nice descending volume, uh, nice very orderly drop off in volume is is the word that I like to use, and uh, that would suggest that this is all corrective. This is all kind of a part of the same consolidation. And if you are to relate these points well as it currently stands, especially if this turns into a rejection, which it is looking like, but not necessarily confirmed just yet, we'll have to wait for a four hour deal to close below forty thirty. But that would you know really really promote the case of this being a uh, descending triangle overall. So. So yeah, uh, multiple ways that this can go, but uh, that is, yeah, that, uh, Jesus Christ, man, yeah. This actually makes a lot of sense. Um, again, remember, uh, CMEs over here will have that gap right around uh, yesterday, or sorry, Friday's close at uh, 30, about 3,900-ish area. Uh, so I would, I would look for a bounce right around there, but um, wherever that bounce gets to, well, that could, that could also be another play. I mean, we could, you know, you could, we could certainly have another run at this uh, at this resistance trend line right over here. But as long as you're below that, it's just going to be another lower high. So I can't stress this enough. Understand the higher time frames and their relation and, and and their governance of what the lower time frames are likely to do. A lot of people getting very very bullish right now. I still don't see it. I, I think it's more hopium than anything. And believe me, I want to be bullish. I'm, <laughs> I mean, I want to be fucking bullish because first things first. If it, once Bitcoin gets to twenty thousand, that's 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 the trigger for Elsa getting brand new titties, the biggest kind possible. And I love titties. I absolutely fucking love them. So believe me, I do want to be bullish. But <laughs> to call a spade a spade, and you know, to actually do some real trading, I don't quite see it just yet. Um, I do see some lower lows until until basically the three things that we spoke about before um, get hit. Remember, that's a higher high on the daily. Weekly dildo, both opening and closing above the 200 exponential. That would actually really change my view a lot, though. And then third and final, but probably, you know, figure, figure it out beforehand. Bitcoin back above 6,000. That would be the final nail in the coffin for me, kind of looking for some long-term longs. Um, until those things happen, you know, this, this looks like it has some lower to go. Um, so again, uh, looking at this guy right over here, do we have anything interesting from our from our uh, Fibonacci's? I do have a Fibonacci retracement from the overall drop. Uh, the 382 would also be aligning with this with this uh, 41, 50, 4190 to 4200 ish area. Um, again, I man, I I actually want things to get back above there just because it would make my life a little bit easier with with managing this trade. But hey, um, do have to be able to roll with the punches here. So if we do take a um, I was gonna say say if we take a fib on let's let's see what the let's see what the bullish fib would say, let's let's see what this guy would say just really quick. I'm I'm curious if it matches up with anything. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I'm gonna guess this matches up with like the with like the what is it the one four four two is it the one three two I I forget but there's probably gonna be something right around there. Um, anyways, that's not that's not the main one. You know, you really want to have your eyes on anyways because the overall trend is still you know it's I mean still very much down. So you want to be looking at the bearish retracement rather than the bullish retracement. Um, if you're looking for the big boy trades, um, but then again, you know, I understand that people want to trade the 10 minute. That's completely fine. You know, I liked, I actually used to trade the five minute in traditional markets, but I think it's a lot more viable in traditional markets just because the day is smaller. So, you know, more significant price action happens within those time frames, especially at the beginning of the day for Bitcoin land. I, I think it's very, di I, it's pretty difficult to trade anything under a 30 minute, um, and uh, and really like an hourly and above is you know I, I think is where the better trades are be, are made. But it doesn't mean you can't scalp those lower ones. And I you know I mean there's plenty of people doing it, uh, myself included. I mean I have a whole video series of me doing it. Um, but I've also stopped that because then I'd get so many fucking my my inbox would get overloaded um, with people asking like how to do that kind of shit. And it's 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 not I, I don't think it was like very. I don't think it was very honest of what I of what true trading is for me and how I do it. Um, 
you know, so again, that's kind of why I stopped that. Anyways, off off on tangents right there. Uh, let's go look at Mr. Buterol. Uh, Mr. Buterol has been the canary in the coal mine, and Mr. Buterol losing his stature right over here. Uh, this does look like a topping formation to me. This is. You know, I mean, I mean, not only did, uh, did you break this more aggressive support trend line, which is not a death sentence by any means, but look how it's still being respected right over here. Um, it does kind of signal to me that this thing wants to come back down and at least test this support at around 19, uh, 149, 149 and a half to 150 ish area on Finex. And uh, below there, you got 145, 144 and a half, which I think is a little bit more likely over a little bit of time. Um, you could make, you know, People are going to be representing this as what uh, an ascending broadening wedge, which is t typically gets broken out to the downside. Um, let's see what the measure move on this guy would be. Something like this. And let's see again. Th this this would be. Oh, look, it, it matches up perfectly with this area right over here. 144 and a half. Uh, this would be initiated if you got a four hour deal to close below 155 and a half. Um, so, again, keep your eyes on that one. Keep your eyes on this one as it has been. Uh, Mr. Butero has been leading the market as he is kind of event driven right now, uh, having some sort of a fork coming up in the next week or so, and then a couple of free coin forks, you know, before that. And event mentality is 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 all the same. Psychology with regarding events is all the same because the bigger accounts, the money movers, they will be using this to create, you know, FOMO for the people that think that these sorts of changes really do matter. When in fact, it's mainly for it's it's mainly to generate and engineer liquidity for the bigger accounts know that that's you know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on that but uh that is you know you see it across all different trading assets not just magic and money it's you know and you've seen it with all sorts of uh, all sorts of events it's all the same psychology with events it's expectations and then basically expectations can only be met they, they, uh, they don't really get succeeded or they fail and what happens then well then then you actually have a reason for for dumping but you know you see it with an announcement of an announcement you see it with exchange listings you see it with futures being being debuted you see it with if you're in traditional marks you, or where, which is where i come from you see it with you know earnings report conference calls uh this that fucking you know whatever it, it you know president gets on and, and, and says something which again not a political statement just <laughs> it's been happening recently so i think it's kind of funny um or maybe not maybe not funny to some people out there but overall um um, this guy right over here does make me want to, uh, do, uh, does make me think that we go a little bit down. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, again, I, I'd imagine that Bitcoin probably follows, uh, Litecoin. I'm going to guess it's probably the same sort of thing. Yeah. Hitting this. Oh, wow. It hit, hit our measure move perfectly to, uh, almost $40 or actually wick up a little bit above $40. looks like, yeah, $40, 12 cents. So good enough is good enough. Um, you will have a big support right over here on the way down, uh, I'd be looking for a bounce right around 36 bucks for at least a scalp. Um, does it hold up or not is a real question. Again, this price action looks very corrective to me. Look at the volume characteristics on this. This is not 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 essentially what I'm looking for. Uh, I think probably better, you know, it's probably going to make a little bit more sense if you look at it on a higher time frame. Actually, higher time frame looks okay. Actually, your 12 actually 12 hour looks okay to be to be fair. Um, a be, a better than Bitcoin, I'd say. But again, Litecoin rallying and if 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 Litecoin were to rally instead of Bitcoin, I, well, we we really haven't seen bifurcation in the market just yet, except for like a few one-off events here here and there. But things you know typically revert back to the mean. Um, doesn't mean that it's. I, I do believe that bifurcation will happen at some point, but hasn't happened it hasn't happened yet. So can't can't trade something that quite literally hasn't happened. Um, again, the difference between an analyst and a trader. An analyst will try to trade some before it's happened, aka tone base at six thousand, and a trader will, you know, take take the trade when it's when when the opportunity costs, you know, as well as the analysis says that it's a that it's a good time. Um, anyways, uh, okay, so talked about that, talked about that. Let's go check out Dixie. Let's go check out the dollar index. Um, dollar index coming down a little bit right over here. Uh, I've been speak I've been speaking on this for a while or not a while now, but uh, I am looking for this to come down a little bit further. Actually, uh, this to me looks like a nice rejection. This it also kind of looks like a lo looks like a little bit of a top to me. Um, uh, major bearish divert, not major bearish divergence, but bearish divergence on your weekly total chart right over here. Uh, technically speaking, I'd want to wait for the $96.07 region to break first, but uh, if that does break, I'd be looking down towards about 90, what is it? $95, $95.06, dollars and, and six cents, something like that. I uh, already hit our first target down around $95.63, uh, but I do believe that it probably goes a little bit lower over time. Um, dollar is looking a little bit weaker to me. Uh, yeah, DMI also saying that uh, buy pressure is significantly waning. Um, and by the way, the the jewel over here, my favorite indicator, probably the most 
I think I think I can I think I can actually say this that this is the most powerful indicator that I know uh, giving you a, giving you a sell signal actually right at the top as well right like literally right over here um, by the way the D or the, sorry the jewel was the only indicator um, in my lineup that in my repertoire that actually got this last move right um, uh, so interestingly enough, uh, none of the, uh, if, if you've been tuning in this content, um, you know, you probably noticed that all of the indicators in this formation right over here in this consolidation phase were snaking around quite a bit and that, you know, it, they, uh, they were pretty much unreliable as they should be in, you know, in, in actual consolidation. Um, so keeping that in mind, you know, I, I just wanted to kind of point that out. Um, again, price action comes first, but the jewel, the jewel was the only one that got it right, um, interestingly enough. So again, I'll just kind of leave that, leave that there. Um, four hour stokes are starting to get a little bit higher, but again, on an actual, you know, the question is, are we ranging or breaking out right now? I'd say the volume control is, is more that of ranging on the higher time frame. So, you know, looking at my stokes and whatnot, that's going to suggest that we probably, you know, we probably do cool off a little bit again in confluence with where the CME is closed on Friday having that nice gap I would be looking around there um, again I'm not uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily be bearish on the first test down in fact I'd probably be a buyer but uh, if it does come back down to base at this level twice if you if you see if you see this level being hit once bounce and then comes back down and hits twice that's probably gonna be a sell for me and, a, and probably a big sell at that um, so yeah, I think that's kind of covering up that. Let's go check out Mr. Ripples. I do want to do want to give him a little bit of a FaceTime as well. Mr. Ripples over here uh, on the three day. Uh, you know, not again, still not doing anything different. You got the uh, you got the three day dildo death cross right over here. Uh, still below the 21 exponential. So I tri I, I play it to the bear side. Um, I'd still you know as as long as you're below the 21 exponential, as long as you're below 30, 37 and a half cents, I'm bearish on this guy. Um, and uh, and well, I mean, really not too much, you know, probably going to be probably going to be also in between that area and about the low 30 cent area, 31 cents. Um, again, pretty much just following the, the general market, the general market, you know, everything moves together, essentially. So I think Bitcoin is a little bit easier to read right now. And uh, that would suggest that we probably do have some more more to play out. Um, to that side anyways uh going back to bitcoin right over here is there anything more that i want to say uh, let's go over to true to traditional markets really quick uh spies over here um closing last friday at 50 uh, 252 and a half um getting to our first kind of target area of potential selling at almost 254 and a half actually about a dollar and a half shy right over there um again i'm not i'm still not bearish on this at all uh i mean it's i mean i am bearish on this looking for lower lows over time but you see so many people fomoing fomoing into shorts right over here at around 240 especially on the second down over here at 245 this was not the time to do it again it was just like bitcoin when bitcoin came down to the weekly 200 simple moving average it's like yes i'm bearish on this and i do believe that it goes lower but it's going to take a long time and you do i, I want to be closing shorts over here that's why i was so fucking vocal about saying yeah okay i'm bearish but i'm not positional bearish right now in fact i'm actually a little bit long um and same thing on this guy as far as spies goes as far as traditional mar markets goes um i would still be looking for a little bit more uh, for for this rally to be extended over the next i don't know you know a couple weeks whatever it might be um you know as uh, i don't really see much stopping you from about 260 ish area i mean sorry i take that back i do th see things you know th there's obvious resistances along the way you got this guy right here at about 254 and a half also lining up with your daily 21 exponential um I do, uh, again, I, this is a bad way to say it, but I do feel like it actually gets, you know, a little bit higher, at least 257. And if it gets 260 ish area, that's kind of like the obvious uh, no brainer trade, in my opinion. But um, again, you know, whether it bounces off today, uh, you know, I think it's still going to be probably a buy if, if we were to come back down. And, uh, you know, once it starts filling out this area and, and we get, and we get maybe to like, you know, February, then, then I'd be looking to be a seller. But, uh, but overall, you know, starting to get there, you know, hitting our first area of resistance, but I, I this this to me looks like it probably wants to work its way a little bit higher um, regardless of whether or not it kind of bounces off this resistance on first pass uh, that's what I'd be saying about that so again as and just from a more traditional way of speaking uh, in a more higher degree of speaking um, as as long as uh, spy is, is uh, closing weekly dollars above the 200 exponential right over here to 239 don't be I would not be bearish looking for lower lows but again just like Bitcoin I am bearish overall I do believe that lower lows will be hit probably in this region right around 210 to 220 Jerry. But that can take a long fucking time you know I'm talking like uh, more more than months more than months um 
So same thing on Bitcoin, you know, it's, I, I would not want to be bearish until, until this red 200 simple moving average right over here is taken out, which is coming, currently coming in around 3250, which actually perfectly lines up now with our nice horizontal trend line coming in right around there. So, uh, so as soon as that area is taken out on a, on a higher time frame, I would become immediately bearish looking for this next blue box territory down around here, right around two, uh, 2,300 to 2,600 right over here. Also your 886 Fibonacci retracement, which is actually where you did bottom out in 2014. Also some nice horizontal trend lines coming around this area and if we put on the volume profile it would suggest that we have some some extreme uh some extreme area of uh, of uh, areas of interest right over here actually even bigger bigger than what you did at six thousand so the uh so the reaction you know suggesting that it's likely to be quite potent doesn't mean that bitcoin can't go lower but the way that i do technical analysis is that each you know uh, I, I see that this area is definitely a potential area uh below that area i got 1850 right over here and then below that area then yeah then, then we can start talking about 1100 to 1300 again um you know i I want to distance myself from like the perma bulls and the perma bears equally because technical analysis is you know it's 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 all a statistical game it's all a setup it's all about risk reward you know tra type of trades and you can see potential areas on the way down um beforehand so again i i'm just i i don't I think it's very irresponsible for someone to say that Bitcoin's definitely going down to 1100 or someone to say Bitcoin's definitely going to 5000. It's it's like, no, fuck no. As far as trading goes, that would be a big no, no. If you're an analyst, then you really have no accountability because you don't even trade. So it doesn't even matter to you anyways, because you're not going to be making money off that. You probably sell indicators or <laughs> never mind. Um, but uh, but yeah, you get my point. So I think we covered all of that. Um, let's see what else we have to talk about. Yeah, let's go over longs and shorts really quick. Uh, there is some interesting to be uh, to be aware of right over here. Uh, longs, we have about thirty three and a half thousand or over thirty three and a half thousand open longs right now. Uh, some guys giving up their uh, some some guys taking profit and shorts falling off the cliff. Uh, still all the way at twenty four thousand. We've lost um, we've lost over ten thousand shorts in the last few uh, last half week. It looks like uh, from right over here. Um, so shorts are pretty inconsequential this is not what you want it's really not what you want you don't want bitcoin to be above four thousand when when longs are above like thirty three thousand. it's it's not a good setup traditionally speaking with shorts coming down even further that suggests that bears you know are basically going to be have plenty of have plenty of ammo to go and dry if they want um so again while i'm not necessarily convinced just yet that this is the top of the rally um I, I I can't exercise enough caution. I can't I can't exclaim enough how much I believe uh, it's it, how, how important I believe it is to be aware that you know each and every one of these levels on the way up is <laughs> you you already know where I'm going with it. You already know where I'm going with it. Um, so again, it could uh, is it going to start with this area right over here potentially, and it would kind of line up very very well with the overall descending triangle uh, idea right over here. In fact. If we use this point instead, which actually does make more sense, to be fair, it actually does make more sense. Um, then I would then that would actually suggest that we've already hit that area. So fair enough. And again, this would be a good example of a measure move being hit, or sorry, a measure move you know pointing all the way up here, making a lot of sense with other things. But because you know the overall trend is very very strongly and very very still presently da uh, down, you know you hit the next big resistance, sellers pile back in on, into the market, and that's what a bear market is essentially. Um, so again, uh, looking at this guy right over here, that's kind of the different scenarios that I see right now as uh, it, it is a little bit difficult right now, because as long as you are above 3,900, as long as you're above basically the four hour, 200 exponential, don't really want to be too damn bearish by the same token, you know, my, my, my overall opinion is bearish. Um, just looking for the next big short and I will be getting out of this long, uh, relatively soon. Uh, I think it's you know what uh, whether it's this area right over here if we if we confirm this next four hour delta below 30 uh, 40 30 ish area or if it's you know or, or if it's one, or if it's either this area here this area here or this area here you know it's going to be one of the, it's going to likely be one of those by the way the full-on measure move from the potential uh, descending broadening wedge would actually be pointing you towards the 618 over here just saying um i forgot to cover that as well but there is some good confluence with that area uh, but again good good risk reward setups you know all, all the way around so that just means that there's a shit ton of opportunity coming up um and uh i think i'll probably leave it with that i'll i'll just briefly talk about talk about what's going on one more time on the lower time frames okay so if the two hour dildo four hour dildo closes below 40 30 ish area then yep i believe that this thing's probably coming back down to at least 3900 to fill the gap from cmes uh probably going to bounce on the first pass where that if that bounce comes back second time that's probably gonna be a sell um by the same token obvious resistance right here at about 40 ish 80 as long as you're closing two hour dildos below there 
well, it's hard to be bullish. <laughs> it's hard to be fucking bullish. If you do close it above there, then perhaps the full-on measure move from this from this triangular consolidation gets hit right around 4180, 4190. That would line up with a shit ton of other things. So there's some great confluence there. If that area gets taken out, which you know, I guess it's possible. Uh, 43, uh, 30 ish area over here would be the next resistance above there. You got 45, 50. Again, I'm, I'm not, I'm just kind of laying these ideas out. I'm not necessarily saying that's going to happen. I don't actually don't believe that it's going to happen to be honest with you. Um, I shouldn't say that to be honest with you. Like I'm always going to be honest with you. Jesus fucking Christ. Just the wrong implications, uh, by the same token to the downside, if you want the more traditional approach, uh, it's not until you really break below this area right over here, uh, 3,900, which is also going to likely line up with the four hour 200 exponential that, and also, you know, the gap on the CMEs where it's time to like, you know, be once again, um, positional bearish but then again it's like i don't want to get too damn bearish as long as bitcoin's above 3250 for like an actual directional trade but then again you know i, th I think you're going to get something very similar to what you got on gbtc and basically filling out this ascending triangle right over here so i keep an eye on that and uh, i think that's where i'm going to leave it on today i'll be on a live stream a little bit later and oh i also want to say um i will be uploading a an interview with my man rocky uh, rocky palumbo from just learn bitcoin.com um later this week uh it was good to really uh, have a have a talk with a fundamental guy he's going to be he's going to be speaking about all of the um all of the all of the new upgrades coming out for bitcoin all the upgrades that have that have happened more uh, more recently since the last time that he was on and uh, just really interesting talk in general so keep an eye out for that probably going to be releasing it either tomorrow or on uh on, on wednesday so just wanted to get that out there again i'll be back on later tonight um for a nice little live stream look forward to see you guys there if not well i hope that you have a beautiful rest of your monday and take care